Uh, okay, steganography. Um, this is, you know, watermarking sort of turned around as a means to communicate. Okay, so we're going to try to use this as a way to get information across. Now, this goes way back, okay, so we've got the Greek historian here uh, talking about a particular uh, situation in war. So you've got the Greek army here, you've got the Persian army here, and you've got another Greek army here. So the Greek general over here wants to communicate to the Greek general over here, but the Persian army's in the way. So what can you do? Get on his satellite phone, give him a call? No. Okay, so here's what he did. Uh, supposedly, he took one of his slaves, shaved the slave's head, wrote a secret message across the back of the slave's head, waited for the hair to grow back, let the slave walk through the enemy lines because he was not suspicious at all. Cause, and he gets to the other side and they shave the head and they read the message. So it's a way to communicate that people would never expect as a means for communication. Uh, it's taken on hidden, hidden writing, literally. Uh, well, what's wrong with this approach? <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> it takes a little while. It takes a while. Okay. Well, you have to put that into you know computer science terms, right? The problem with this approach is the bandwidth is too low. Okay. So, uh, but you know, if you look historically, steganography has certainly been used a lot. Until modern times, it was certainly used much more than, uh, than cryptography. If you could communicate and people didn't even suspect you were communicating or you communicate in a way that people just couldn't understand, although not really encrypted, that was fine, okay? It was used a lot. Um, okay. Okay, a modern steganography, a very popular technique, is to hide uh, information in image files. Okay, so let's look at images. Uh, images uh, are often encoded using a color scheme, the so-called RGB color scheme, of using 24 bits. So there's a byte for the red, a byte for the green, a byte for the blue, to tell you what shade of each of those to use. So how many bits of color is that? 24, so how many different colors? Two to the 24, that's like 16 million different colors. Can you really distinguish 16 million different colors with your eye? I don't think so, okay. So there's some potential here for us to steal a few bits and do with as we please to hide our information. Okay, here's a couple examples. Uh, here's the RGB colors, okay. Here's another RGB color. If you look at this guy, turns out to be this color. If you look at this one, it's this. How about these colors themselves? How much do they differ by? Well, look, the blue is the same. The green is the same. The red differs by? It's not a trick question. <laughs> one single bit. Okay, they're the same, except for one bit, yet the colors are very different, right? Now, if you look at these two colors, they kind of look the same to me. I don't know how they look to you, but they look the same to me. Um, and hey, they differ by a bit too. So what's going on here? One bit, it's the same. One bit, it's completely different. This is less impressive than I thought. Well, it won't matter in the next picture. Okay, so the real punchline here won't matter. Okay, so what's going on? Yeah, it's the low order bits. Okay, the low order bits don't matter. So the low order bits are just there free for the taking. We can change those bits and the colors will not change. All right, high order bits better stay away from those because we may actually change the colors. <coughs> okay, so how can we take advantage of that? Well, there's a lot of bits here in these RGB color schemes, okay? That's three bytes, you know, for every pixel telling us the color. So there's a lot of room here to steal bits. Okay, so we're going to take an uncompressed image file using our favorite format. Okay? Uh, and we're going to insert information in these lower uh, RGB bits. And the result is going to be invisible in this sense. It's invisible in the sense that the image looks the same before we hid the information and after. Because we only mess with the low order bits which don't affect anything perceptually. All right? But it's not really invisible. Right? 
If you take a hex editor and look at that file, you would see the bits in those low order positions that we put in there, okay? Or if you wrote a program to open the file and extract those bits, you could do that. But it's invisible in the perception sense. Okay, so here's two images. This one's our usual Alice image. This one here is Alice with the entire Alice in Wonderland book in PDF form embedded in the image. I'm not making this up. It's really there. All right? So that's the wild fact. Uh, in fact, I mean, this has such a wow factor that there's, um, um, have any of you used textbooks by uh, Tannenbaum? Tannenbaum? Yeah, he's a very good author. I like his books a lot. He's got a book on networking. And somewhere in the back, he's got like a section, pretty small section on security. And somewhere in there, for no apparent reason that I can discern, he's got two pictures of zebras. And he says, this picture of the zebra is just a picture of the zebra. This picture of the zebra has this entire textbook embedded in the image of the zebra in PDF form or something like that. So it's like this, right? Um, okay, well, you know, I hate to be like a killjoy and all this, but I want to try and make you less impressed by this. Okay? That's my purpose for the rest of this lecture. Um, okay, so let's look at this example here, which is, there's no steganography going on here. I just have this, suppose I have this HTML uh, uh, page set up, and I've got these few lines of text there. Now you go to my, you go to this uh, web page, you look at it, and you view the source. Okay, so this is the actual source uh, HTML here. So what's going on? This looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I mean, what's with all this font <coughs> and color business? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because I'm specifying each line, but I'm just saying each line is black, okay? So again, this is RGB, color scheme, and all zeros just mean zero, 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 right? And in X, and it's black, okay? And I specify each line. Okay, no big deal, right? Well, now I have a Stego version of this, which contains secret information, okay? Uh, and well, it looks the same. But I went into the colors, and since these are, again, RGB colors, I can mess with the low order bits and not affect the color. So I went into each byte here, and I am free to put whatever I want in those low order bits. So the low order bit here is zero, one, one. So that's my first three secret messages, three bits of my secret message. And the next one is zero, one, zero, right? See what's going on here, okay? And zero, uh, one, zero, zero, right? Okay. So how could I use this? Well, if you know, right, if I tell you, hey, I got this secret message, go look at this file, you can go look at the file, you can view the source, and you can immediately read out the bits of the secret information. Okay, so I've communicated this secret information using steganography, a method that's not supposed to be used to communicate information and such. I've hidden it in there. Now this is not very wow, okay? But if you think about it, this is exactly what's going on with the PDF file, right? Is what's the difference? The difference is this is easy to look at, right? For humans to look at. The bits in that PDF, uh, the bits in that Alice image, they're just hard to look at. But to a computer program, it's probably actually easier to deal with the bits in the, in the in the image file than it is to deal with these bits because you got to be more careful how you parse them out. So, you know, it's just uh, it's just sort of your definition of invisible, right? It's just easier for humans to look at this than it is to look at that other thing. Okay, so I hate to be a killjoy, but you know, think about it. Okay, so okay, so the bottom line here is that some of these things are just easier for humans to look at. Okay, so if it's hard for humans to uh, look at, you know, it's probably a little better hidden in some sense. But uh, from a computer's point of view, if you're writing code, it's really no different. Uh, okay, now it's easy to hide information in the unimportant bits. Okay, that's what we've been doing. We stole those, we, we looked at those low order RGB bits. They're not important, they don't really matter. So we can do whatever we want with them. But think about this. 
Okay, and actually at this conference I was at, there was a guy there who, who had developed a tool and he could hide information in image files, just like this. He would take the low order bits and put information there. He claimed he was actually using it as a way to communicate with a friend of his that lived in some repressive country. You know, they were checking, they were afraid people were reading their emails and all this stuff, so they would just send images back and forth, and they would put the information in these low order RGB bits, and it worked just fine. They could communicate back and forth. Okay, now suppose I'm the chief security guy in this repressive country, right? And I see all these people exchanging all these image files. I'm kind of suspicious. What might I do? I could go into these image files and I could just change, randomly change the low order RGB bits. If I'm wrong and they're actually just sending vacation pictures back and forth, it doesn't matter. I haven't affected the images at all. If I'm correct and they are actually sending secret messages back and forth, their messages are completely hosed. Right? They cannot get any information back and forth. Okay, so the point is, if you use those unimportant bits, it's easy to hide the information, but it's also easy to attack and destroy the information. Okay, so it's not robust. It's a very non-robust way to hide information. Suppose I want my system to be robust. In other words, if somebody tampers with it, they have to make such drastic changes that the image looks different, okay? It really messes up the image. Well, if I want to do that, I better use the important bits, the bits that matter. I better have them involved somehow in my system. But how can I do that? Because if I use the important bits, what's going to happen? When I insert the information, the image is going to look different. Right? So I'd have to be very careful how I make those changes. I have to make sort of complementary changes that would not affect the image. You have to be very cautious about that. So, okay, so really the bottom line on all this uh, uh, steganography stuff is that it's kind of tricky, okay? It seems really impressive when you first see it, but I think if you drill down and think about it a little bit more, it's not quite so impressive, and doing it properly, you know, so it's truly robust in particular, is really challenging. Okay, uh, okay so any questions about that? Steganography? Okay, so don't forget, we have a test coming up. You have a homework assignment due. Uh, questions, be sure to bring them next time. For test preparation. Are yeah. you willing to specify now uh, through what point in the book the test will cover? Yeah, first five chapters. Uh, everything we covered in the first five chapters, which is almost everything, uh, I think really the only major thing we didn't cover was the uh, uh, elliptic curve stuff. I think almost everything else. Did you talk about Tiger uh, and the tiger hash. Okay, right. So tiger hash, elliptic curves. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be a little more specific. And if you want to start studying, it's never too early. To start studying. So did the, you want to come and uh, this elliptic curve and tiger hash? What? Elliptic curve and tiger hash, they won't be included? No. Uh, they won't. Um, if you want to start studying, the thing to do is to look at the homework. Okay? That's the best thing you can do to study. And speaking of the homework, I forgot to mention this at the start. Okay, I was quite annoyed by the homework assignment uh, this time. It was uh, really a lot of people just gave up and made no attempt to do the homework whatsoever. Now, amongst the 265 students, it wasn't quite as bad, but you guys had the easy assignment. I would have expected really good assignments from 265. You unintentionally got an easier assignment than you were supposed to, and still they weren't great. But amongst the 166, particularly in this section, they were really bad. I mean, half the people didn't turn anything in, and you know, really made no effort whatsoever. If you don't do, you know, I, I just don't understand that because the home, the test is going to look like the homework. You're going to have to know that stuff at some point. So why not know it and get credit for the homework, okay? Instead of just trying to catch up now and do it for the test. But anyway, you've got to get that stuff down before the test. All right.